Good morning, everyone. Let's all stand up and pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, what a beautiful Thanksgiving break you have given to each one of us. For you are good, your faithful love endures forever, Father. We're just so thankful that each Sunday we can always come to this beautiful sanctuary to experience your message, to feel your love, Father. Today, even though it's a little bit cloudy, it's a little bit raining, but we see that the rains are the showers of blessing. We see that as your faithfulness, Father. Some of us might going through difficult times. Some of us might experience hardship right now. But Lord, you are faithful and you are everlasting. We just thank you, Lord, for your Son Jesus, who died for our sin on the cross. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's, uh, let's all proclaim the Apostle Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitting on the right hand of God. The Father Almighty, from hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before we start, let's greet each other. Say hi. Shake their hands. Hey Tom, what's up? I hope everyone has a w awesome Thanksgiving break. <laughs> Did you guys all have turkey? No. Okay. All right. Let's start. If you have a Bible with you or Bible app, either iPhone or Android, whatever it is, open the the Book of Romans, Romans chapter eight, verse twelve to thirteen. The book of Rom Romans, chapter 8, verse 12 to 13. The title is, Are You Free Today? Are you guys free today? I'm not asking, are you free to hang out or something. Are you free today? Okay, let's read the verse together. What did it say? Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh, to live according to it. But if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Going to back to the picture, are you free today? I think the question is, are you free of your sin? Are you free of your bondage? Are you free of your bad habits? Each one of us, we all have, you know, individually bad habits or something. What happened? Let's look at this picture. Have you guys been to Alaska Dalton Highway? I never been there. Why I post this picture? Well, one day I was looking at YouTube channels and I Google. Uh, 2015 Forerunner Limited because I like cars and I came across this beautiful video. Alaska seems very far away, right? And you say, what? Go to Alaska? 
that might be very far, very cold. Uh, maybe expensive to go, right? You have to fly, you cannot drive there. So imagine yourself. Look at this picture. What do you see? Trees. What verb, what description would you come to mind? For those who like hiking, Jay, uh, Tom, or beautiful, right? It's beautiful. Part of the Delton Highway is an unpaved road. You need an off-road vehicle. You need, you need some SUV to go through the path. Let's look at this scenery, okay? Alaska, when you see the mountain, wow, so nice, isn't it? I want to go there. Do you guys want to go there? Do you like, do you enjoy this beauty? You feel so free. You feel so relaxed when you see the picture. The question is, ask yourself, are you enjoying your freedom? When we are free, when we are hanging out, just enjoying the beauty of creation, we feel so light, right? No work today, you know, no family stuff. There. So relaxing, so free. So the question is, are you free from anxiety? Are you free from anger? Are you free from stress? Are you free from fear? Are you free from sin? Are you free from something that is holding you? Well, we all do have struggle. But by Jesus Christ's blood, we are set free. We, we no longer bound to bondage. So, let's take a look at the questions. This is our first question. Do you guys still remember the beginning of 2014? Each one of us has a New Year resolution. One of my New Year resolutions was to lose weight. You know what? I lost 15 pounds this year. You know, it's kind of skinny, you know, just kidding. All right, so almost the end of 2014. How well have you done with your New Year resolution? We have multiple choice. A, you know what? I did very well. Not just losing weight, but I follow through all my Bible reading and experience truly grace from Jesus Christ. He is living word, okay? Or B, well, you know, not so well, you know, but I'm trying, I'm kind of struggling. Or C, oh, you know what? I forgot what I had planned it. Uh, I don't really care. Which one would you choose? Mostly, we are toggling between A and B. In some area, we did well. In some area, maybe not so well. Okay? Each one of us, no matter you choose A or B, we are still here to try to give thanks, to try to appreciate the living word from our Savior Jesus Christ. Now let's look at, we all have a great Thanksgiving, you know, some of us had turkey, some of us did not have turkey, but that's not important. We give thanks. We give thanks no matter good things happen to us or bad things happen to us, right? What about the other side of the corner? So let's zoom out to Google Earth. And then let's zoom in to the other country. What do you think they went through in this Thanksgiving break? They might have their church or house burned. They might be beat up by police because they are Christian. But they are free. They are free and they have amazing joy. You, you know, Johan, you say, Johan, how can they give thanks? How can they appreciate God's love when this tragedy happened to them? But the answer is, they still give thanks to God. They still love Jesus, even though this kind of thing happened to them 
during Thanksgiving because they are free. They are free from what the flesh telling them. The flesh telling them, "Look at you. You are Christian, but you got beat up. Where is God?" But in their heart, they said, "I give thanks to Jesus, for He is living God. Jesus is all I have. I will not deny Him." They are free from the flesh pain. They endure the pain. By the power of the Holy Spirit, they endure hardship, and they give thanks. Sometimes, when I hear those story of missionary, persecuted or martyr, I envy their faith. How can they have this power to go through? We all want to serve God. We all want to live righteously. But the question is. Matthew chapter twenty six forty one, it says the spirit is willing, the body is weak. Right? We all know the right thing. We all know we need to do. But the problem, the bottleneck, the problem, is always our body. Right? Our body doesn't want to do, but your spirit telling you you need to. Read the Bible. You need to do good. You need to pray. You need to spend time with the Lord. So today we're gonna dig into how we can not control by flesh. First, we need to understand why we need strong discipline. Throughout many years, I learned the only way to please God is to live a disciplined life. You know, nowadays I go to gym about at least three times or four times a day. You know, it is really hard. In the beginning, my body telling me, "You know, you work all day long, Johan. Why don't you just sleep? Why don't you just do something? You know, don't go to gym or don't read the Bible. Just sleep, watch TV, just do unproductive thing." It took me a month. To discipline my body. Why am I going to gym three to four times a week? Well, I, I want to lose weight, right? I want to have a muscle. I want to look. You know, I used to have a slim body, but you know, I'm getting there because I need to reach my goal. What is my goal? Lose weight. What is my goal? Is to be healthy. Now let's coming back to the spiritual side. Why do we read? Why do we read the Bible? Why do we need to spend time with God? Is, is it right to do that? Yes, but it is very hard, isn't it? Let's look at Romans chapter six, verse twelve to thirteen. What did the Bible tell us? Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, to make you obey its passion. This is very hard. When I see a nice food. You know, delicious food. You know, when you go work out, you cannot just work out. You need to be disciplined in diet. Okay, I was told that if you want to have a six pack, you need to be super duper disciplined in your diet. You can only have salads, chicken. That's it. You cannot have steak. You cannot have delicious food if you want to be look like that guy. Okay, do I want to look like that guy? Maybe, maybe not. Not so much. But I do want to discipline my body. Let's read further. Do not present your members to sin as instrument of unrighteousness, but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instrument of righteousness. If you want to be an instrument of righteousness, if you if you see your spouse, if you see your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, girlfriend, or Your coworkers, if you want to be a light and salt, you need to discipline. If you want to look good in your body, you must work out. You must discipline your life. The Bible calls us not just going to church on Sunday, not just attending Bible study. We need to be trained as the light, as the salt, and spread the gospel to all nations. This is our mission. To do that, we need a strong discipline. 
not just physically, but spiritually. We all know that we should do that, but why is it so hard? The question is, the sixty thousand, sixty thousand dollars question is, expensive question is, why is it so hard? Because of sin. Remember, either you kill sin, or sin will kill you. Okay, you cannot compromise. Either you live lazy life, or you be diligent in a daily basis. All of us cannot do that with our own power. We need Jesus Christ, right? But you say how? You know, yeah, Johan. I want to discipline my spiritual life. I want to do good, but my flesh don't follow. You must have extreme makeover. We need extreme makeover. What is extreme makeover? Have you guys watched those TV shows? That there's a before and there's an after. Before she, the the girl was so fast, not pretty, but you know after those makeovers, she might under training, going to gym on diet, she became a totally different person. I went through this extreme makeover from 2003 to 2008, five years. I was I was living in a life. With pain,、um, you know, a lot of things going on, but from my family, from from my work. But I put myself in the extreme training. Have you guys remember every time you invite Johan to, you know, that was like five years ago to hang out? I always say no. You know, I I I have to stay home. What was I doing that back then? I locked myself in the room. I knew down. And I pray with tears, because I felt I was a deep sinner. I locked myself in the room. I was meditating, reading the Bible. I erased all the phone number of my friends that used to invite me to go drinking to the party. I shut down all the internet. You say. Man, Johan, do you have really have to do that? Well, I only can tell you what I experienced. I cannot tell you you need to do that. But after, I felt extremely free. I felt the power to love others, even though the person did not like me, even though the person spoke evil behind me, even though this he punched me. He, I, I felt. The supernatural power to love, to embrace, that doesn't come easy. Romans chapter eight thirteen. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. Now, what do you mean by that? If you live according to your flesh, sometimes your emotion will tell you, your brain will tell you, don't do that, don't read the Bible. It's super boring. You know, do something fun. This is what the flesh is telling you. If you Make decision according to that, you will die. I'm talking about spiritually death. But if by spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. If you can win that emotion telling you, one day at a time, you experience victory. So it all comes down to how do we spend your time. On a daily basis, that makes you listen to spirit or flesh. Okay, so we all understand every single day. This good spirit will tell you to do the right thing. Your flesh will tell you to do the wrong thing. Romans chapter seven, fourteen to twenty. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of flesh, so understand. We all believe Jesus Christ, but the problem is we still have the flesh body. The body, my flesh, always pull me to the other side. For I do not understand my own action. For I do not do what I want, but I do everything I hate. Have you guys experienced that? You did the wrong thing, and at the end of the day,、oh, you feel guilty. 
you feel dry, you feel bad. That I shouldn't shout at my 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 husband and wife. I shouldn't yell at him. I shouldn't yell at her. I shouldn't do things. I shouldn't hate. I shouldn't feel angry to my parents. You know, we all experience that. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law. That is that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. The problem is, how do we deal with our sin? Is the source. You can hold your anger. You can you can pretend you you're not angry, but how long can you do that? We need to find the source. The source is the sin. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. Everyone agree? We all want to do what is good, but my body not 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 doing it. My body is not doing it. Something is going on. You guys agree? Something is going on to do what is right, but what is wrong? I do it every day. It is the same struggle as I struggle, Apostle Paul struggle. You and I struggle. Okay, so the question is, how do we discipline our flesh? How do we discipline our flesh? Sin is like a cancer. You have to understand. You have this cancer that only Jesus Christ can save. Now you say, Johan. Okay, I do want to discipline my flesh, but it is so hard. No, first you have to understand. It is hard. It is impossible. If you do it with your strength, with God, all things are possible. The question and the question is, how? What should I do in a daily basis? The question is, if you have a cancer like the sin, if you have anger issue, if you have jealousy issue, the problem is not. Your emotion. The problem is the sin. How do we do that? Get a knife. Get a sword. Cut it out. Man, it's a point. I know you, Johan, don't want to do that. Well, the Bible says that put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly na- nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, greed, which is idolatry. When you look at that verse, you say, "Who, who in the world can do that? It is so hard." It is possible. It worked in me. God, in those five years, did surgery in my heart. I had a lot of addiction. I had a lot of bad habits, which I no longer do. It is possible. Only if you willing to go to the surgery table. It causes pain, but it works. What is a sore? How do we cut out those bad habits? The Bible said, "The living word of God is a double-edged sword." But the question is, does it mean, Johann, I need to get a Bible and, and, and punch my head? No, you need to meditate. You need to read the word as joyful as you read the text from your boyfriend, girlfriend, as you read. The love letter from your husband and wife. You need to meditate with the joy. If you have an emotion telling you, whenever I open the Bible scripture, I just don't feel like reading it. That is a disease symptom. From John Piper, what did he say? If a fever is a symptom of a disease in the body, now lukewarmness is a symptom of the disease of unfaithfulness in the soul. Where in the Bible can you get that? Revelation chapter three. Jesus said, "I know your words. You are neither cold nor hot. What with that, you were neither cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spit you out of the mouth." The churches in North America, in the West, well, not by mine. They are not. Feeling, spilling, filling with the fire. Does it mean that I need to sacrifice my body 
to death? Well, I cannot tell you. I'm not God. But what I know is it is so easy to be lukewarm because of the comfortness we are living here. We have comfortable life. We have no persecution physically. We are living very happily, comfortably. That make us to be lukewarm. That make us to be dry and lose the passion for saving souls. The Bibles tell us to be free, to be free from addiction, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be an instrument to save souls. But what we are doing is just living our life as unbeliever. We just enjoy ourselves. We don't even care people if they die in a car accident. They don't know God. We need to speak out. We need to be free in order for us to be an instrument of light and salt. We need to be free. You guys watch this movie. What is this movie? You guys remember? The people who raise their hands struggle to be free and hunger game. They want to be free. Well, the movie is free physically. But each one of us, don't you want to be free from your selfishness? Don't you want to be free from your addiction, your anger? Do you want that? The question is, do you want that? Yes or no? We must hate the bondage. We must hate the evil desire. We must hate sin in order to be free. Okay, John chapter twelve, twenty-five to twenty-six. Those who love their life in this world will lose it. Those who care nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternity. Anyone who wants to serve me must follow me, because my servant must be where I am, and the Father who will honor anyone who serves me. I highlight the red one. Those who care nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternity. Those who care nothing when they were murdered, when they put a gun in their head. When they die for Jesus Christ, with thankfulness, those who care nothing for the world, those who love their life in this world, will lose it. We all know we cannot serve God and the world, the pleasure at the same time, and you must choose one, and you must drop the other. I cannot do sin at the same time. God bless me with a. High-paid job, so I can bless my family. But at the same time, when I go back home, I curse my family. I, I I hate them. You can't tell that. You must totally tell God. You say, God, I really hate the addiction, the sin, whatever anger, whatever issue I have. I'm through it. I'm done. I'm finished. And I want to surrender. I want to give up all this. Even to the cost of following you, God will not push each one of us to follow Him. Although He might bring storm in your life to wake you up. Okay, I'm not saying that you all need to have a storms and and no no no. It's, I don't have the authority. Only God has to bring storm in your life. The question is, you cannot love this world and God at the same time. You cannot love sin. And love God at the same time. Now, how do I cut it? How do I cut my bad habit? Well, it takes discipline. There is no shortcut. There is no, you know, three-day class or one-week class to do that. If your hands cause you to sin, cut it off. Man, that's hurt. That's brutal. Does it mean I need to cut my hands? No. If your bad habits, if your sin. Cause you to sin, discipline it, and cut it off. If drinking, if partying, if smoking, if anything you can think of, cause you to get close to God, cut it off. It is better to enter eternal life with only one hand than 
go into the unquenchable fires of hell with two hands. If your food caused you to sin, if your anger caused you to be bad to your family members, remove it. Find out the source, reading the scripture, try to discipline. It is better to enter eternal life with only one foot than to be thrown into hell with two feet. And if your eyes cause you to sin, clutch it out. If you have a problem of pornography, if you have a problem with looking at women or men, if you have the lust, does it mean that I have to cut off my eyes? No. You need to pray to God. You need to be disciplined. You need to hate that in order to come out of that bondage. Remember, it is not by my power, but by Jesus' power. And you can't have Jesus' power if you are not living in a disciplined life, if you don't want to get out of sin. Once you make the decision, God will make you to have power. And I did that many years ago. I was living in a sin. I told God, God, I really hate that. I need your help. I need your help with the tears. I need your help with pain. Help me, God. And he did. God wants you 100% commitment. He will not force you. He will not push you to change. He is waiting for you. It is better to enter the kingdom of God with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell. Heaven is real. We all know. We all want to go to heaven. It's beautiful. But hell is real too. What we do in a daily basis determine the destination. You say we are all saved, but we have to live in Christ to have the power. In Christ does not mean you come to church on Sunday, you acknowledge Jesus exists. But if your life does not live like Him, it's, it's, not, it's not there. Being Christian does not mean I believe in God and I know the Bible. Being Christian means you invite Jesus to control your life, to give it up, to surrender 100%. Not 80%, not 50%. So the power of the Holy Spirit begins to work in you and others can be blessed. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we no longer be slave to sin. It might sound hard, it might sound difficult. It is really easy. All you need is to hasten to ask God, I want that. I want the freedom. I want a disciplined life. I have a determination. I want that. Do you really want that or do you kind of want that? There is no shortcut or quick way to be disciplined. It comes with a determination. It comes with a determination with pain, with cutting. Failure would never overtake me if my determination to succeed is strong enough. Are you willing to jump? Are you willing to trust God that He will carry you through once I have the parachute on me? Are you, doubt, are you doubting God? Oh, if I make my determination, maybe something happened to me. No, just jump and He will carry you. Just cut and with the discipline and you will experience freedom. I googled this uh, Chinese always saying, I'm gonna speak in Mandarin, it's a, when cutting down the weeds, you must get at the roots. Otherwise, the weeds will return with the spring freeze. Okay? So all this hatefulness, all this murder, drunkenness, all the bad things, all the bad, sinful, evil desire, we can see in the tree. But the problem is the root, is the sin is in the root. Okay? So when we cut it out, we need to cut the whole thing. We need to make determination 
to unroot the whole thing by the blood of Jesus Christ, by discipline in reading, by, by making a change in my life. And God will carry you through that if you want to do that. So question is how and how and how. So I just want to share what I've been doing, practical stuff, okay? The most difficult things for each one of us is media fast and cutting. What is the source make me feel angry, make me feel sinful, evil desire? According to statistics, is what we read, what we see every day. Media, TV, internet, YouTube, Facebook, your phone. What is the ratio of the time you spend on your desire, anything your body wants, versus God? And you can answer the question in your heart. That determines how much you're cutting every day. Count your blessing throughout the day. Do you spend more time giving thanks? Or do you spend time complaining? That will also determine how well you do in a daily basis. Pray for others. Pray for others first before asking God for your wish list. That also determines how well you cut your sin, how well you discipline your life every day. Some of us might feel, man, I, I didn't do much pretty well last year or, or this year. The good news is God is always waiting for you and I to turn back. God is wa always waiting for us to hit the restart button. If your cell phone, iPhone, Android phone got messed up, just reset it. Just tell God, I want to reset myself in 2015. I want to come back to you. I want to jump to the ocean of love, and I will believe you will carry me. The book of Job 2, 12 to 13. That is why the Lord says, turn to me now. Okay, it means that turn to me now, where there's time. Why there's a time? We're still in, in, this, in this world. Give me your heart. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Don't tear your clothing in your grief. Instead, tear your heart. Whatever you do, open your heart. Surrender totally. Return to the Lord your God, for He is gracious and merciful. He is always waiting for us to come back to Him. He is not easily angered, but He is filled with kindness and is eager, and is eager not to punish you. God is always waiting for each one of us. In some areas, myself, Johan, did not do well. In some areas, I did well. But I always ask for help. I always ask for strength. I'm not doing this discipline myself because I know God is with me. You ask for strength because, remember, we are not doing this alone. Every step you walk, you can see God is with you. All right? Isaiah 41.10 do not be discouraged. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. All you need to do is ask Him. Instead of asking for a new car, a new job, or whatever blessing is, the first thing when you pray, God, I need your strength. God, I really need your power to overcome this, to overcome that. And He will give you. If we keep doing this discipline, if we keep making a determination, day by day, you will see the fruit. Colossians chapter 2, 7. Okay? Every time you do discipline, it will make an energy bar. Okay? You guys play the video games, right? Every time you succeed, you have a one star. And then every time you pass stage two, you have another star. So we need to keep discipline us so we will see the righteous, the good fruit root going down. Colossians chapter 2, 7. Let your roots grow down into him and let your life be built on him. Let your roots grow down, grow down in him. Him means a daily devotion and time 
that you sacrifice yourself, not going too much with your uh, 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 video game or drama or the thing that you want to do, the thing you want to cut, and you spend time with him, it will accumulate. If you do that in a daily basis, then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Let me give you a great example. You know, we, we go to retreat, right? Retreat meaning we go to a nature place, a beautiful place like Big Bear. And all we do is spending time praying together, reading the word together. We isolate ourselves from work, from daily routine. We felt refreshed after retreat. We felt strengthened after retreat because we've been doing that. Because we have inputting our brain with the word of God. No media, no Facebook, no worldly knowledge. Then your faith will grow strong if you were taught. So cutting those hours that your body wants to do on a daily basis make a great difference in your spiritual life with him. So to summarize, how to be free and not let your flesh control us. Number one, if you don't kill sin, he will kill you. We need to be disciplined and no compromise. One little compromise that you make that will ruin your whole day. Number two, kill the root that caused you to sin, sorry, not, not to see, cause you to sin, which is a sore word of God. How much you read, how, much, how many chapters you read, how well you spend, how much love that you pour out on a daily basis will make a big difference. And number three, don't give up, don't feel discouraged. We can always hit the restart button again and move on. The question comes to you, do you want to change or do you kind of want to change? The determination is very important. In 2015, which is coming in a couple of months or one month, tell God what you really want to change and ask Him for power. Let's pray. Dear Lord, dear Lord, we sing the song, we love you, but sometimes our action don't follow. But nevertheless, Lord, in 2015, we want to hit the restart button again. We want to make a good determination. Help us to hate sin, but to love the people. Help us to swallow the word of God just like honey. Help us to fall in love with your living word and help us to pray for the saints around the world, especially those who were martyred, who were persecuted. Lord, Lord, help us not to take things for granted. Help us not to take this beautiful weather for granted, but fill with thankfulness and joy and overflow to others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.